we'll represent the underlying array with this set of file folders, and I've labeled the indices 0 to 9. Okay, I've got the same main method here. I've got my my ha my set is my hash set that's going to hold strings for me. The first thing I'm going to do, so you're going to imagine I am the hash set, and I'm going to try and add tiger. Okay, remember, I need a reliable way to know where I'm going to put it. So first, I'm going to call hash code on tiger. Uh, we can see below that tiger hash code returns 80, 80, 60, 47. Since I have a 10 element array, I've decided I'm going to use the last digit to decide what index in that array to put it in. So I'm going to put it at index 7. You know, we could have used a different scheme. As long as we're consistent, it will work. Okay, so I go to index 7 and I find that it's empty so I can add tiger right there. All right, my next line um, I'm going to call contains with tiger. I need a reliable way to know where to, I should put it or look for it in this case. So I'm going to call hash code on tiger. Hash code on tiger returns the value shown there. I'm going to use that last digit or the seven to figure out what index of the array I should put it at. When I get to index seven, which I can jump right to in constant time, I find that the array element isn't empty. And so what I need to do is I need to compare the thing I'm trying to check for, tiger, to any elements that are in at that array index. So I'm going to compare it using the equals method. So I'm going to compare tiger and tiger. I'll find it that, out that they are dot equals. So I'll return true that uh, my set does contain tiger. Next up, I want to add panda. So adding panda, I need a reliable way to know where to put it. So I'm going to call hash code on panda. I get the value shown there. Again, I'm going to use that last digit, which is a four. So I'll go and try and put this at index four. When I look at index four, I see that it's empty, so I can add panda. Okay, next up, I'm going to try and add panda again. Again, I want a reliable way to know where to put it, so I'm going to call hash code on panda. Hash code on panda returns the value shown there. The last digit is what I'll use to figure out which of my array indices to put it at. So I'm going to look at index four. Index four is not empty, and so I'm going to have to compare panda that I'm trying to add to anything that's stored at index four. So I have to call dot equals with panda and panda. Those are dot equals, so I'm not going to add it, because remember, a set doesn't keep duplicates. Okay, next up, line 10, I'm going to add zebra. I want a reliable way to know where to put it, so to do that, I'm going to call hash code. Hash code is going to return the value shown there. I'm going to use that last digit, which is a zero, to figure out what array index to put it at. When I look at index zero, I find that it's empty, and so I can add the string zebra there. Okay, next up, row 11, I want to add the string giraffe. To do that, I need to call hash code on giraffe. Hash code on giraffe gives me the value there. And now I'm going to use the last digit, that's the 2, to figure out what array index to put it at. I go to array index 2 and there's nothing else there, and so I'm able to add the string giraffe. And remember, I could have used a different scheme, something other than using the last digit to figure out the array index, but that's what I'm going to use here. And as long as I pick something that's consistent, I'm totally fine. Okay. Next up, I'm adding bear, so I have to call hash code on bear. That gives me the value shown there. The last digit is an 8, so I should put this at array index 8. I see that index 8 is empty, so I'm able to add bear. Line 13, I want to add lion, so I need to call hash code on lion. That gives me the hash code shown there, and its last array, sorry, its last digit is a 2, so I want to put this at index 2 in my array. When I get to index 2, I find that it's not empty, so I need to compare lion to all of the elements stored at index 2. So I'm going to call dot equals here with lion and giraffe. I find that they are not dot equals, so I'm also going to add lion. Okay, next up I want to add camel. The first thing I do is I'm going to call hash code on camel. That gives me the value shown there, and its last digit is a 2. So again, I'm going to put this, or I'm going to try and put this at index 2. When I get to index 2, I find that it's not empty, so I need to compare it to all of the elements that are currently at index 2. So I'm going to call dot equals with camel and giraffe. That's false. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to call dot equals with camel and lion. Again, that's false, and so I'm going to add camel to 
index to. Line 15, I'm going to check if my set contains camel. Same algorithm, essentially. I need a reliable way to know where I would have put it. So I'm going to call hash code on camel. Hash code gives me, on camel gives me that value there. The last index, sorry, the last digit is a two. So I'm going to look at index two. I find that index two is not empty. And so I need to compare camel to all the elements that are index two. So I'm gonna call dot equals with camel and giraffe, that's false. I'm gonna call dot equals with camel and lion, that's false. And then I'm gonna call dot equals with camel and camel, that's true. So I'm gonna be able to return that yes, my set contains camel. Last line, I'm gonna say, I wanna remove the element or the string lion. Same algorithm, I need a reliable way to know where I would have put it. So I'm gonna call hash code on lion. Hash code on lion returns the value shown there. Its last digit is a two, so I'm gonna go to index two in my array. I find index two is not empty, so I need to compare lion with all the elements at index two. So I call dot equals with lion and giraffe, that returns false. Next, I, return, I call dot equals with lion and lion. That returns true, so I found the line that I'm trying to remove, and I can remove line. Okay, so as a reminder, again, here we were looking at chaining, and I hope you can see how we're using both hash code and equals to be able to implement how the hash set actually decides where to put things. And as long as it's consistent about where it is going to put things, it can also use that system to figure out when it's looking for it for a contains or remove where it should be.